What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another LumaFusion 3.0 tutorial. Today we're going to talk about something that it gets used quite often and it's something that I get asked a lot about which is how to do slow-mo inside of LumaFusion 3.0. Now I'm sure if you've been inside LumaFusion at all you know there is a speed and reverse tab inside of the edit screen and that it shows you exactly the best puts a lineup, shows you exactly where to slow your footage down to and everything like that. What I want to talk about before we get into it is the actual physics behind what happens and why you get that number and what you should be thinking about when you're shooting to do a slow mode video. So the way video works is it's actually not a moving picture. I know that seems like so basic, but you kind of have to go to the basics to really talk about this. What your camera actually does is it takes a certain number of pictures every second and then blends them together to look like a moving picture. So if you're doing like this, it's actually taking picture, 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 and then it blends them together to look like it's moving. Why is that important? Well, if you are taking a video that is shot at 24 frames per second, you can't slow that down if you're running it in a 24 frames per second timeline. The reason being is what happens when a an editing software slows down a video clip is it takes that clip and you want to go from one second to two seconds, it has to create that second in between. So what it generally does is if you're going from one second to two, that means you're cutting it in half so every other frame it puts a new picture in. So if you filmed at 24 frames per second, it has to just double one of those frames, or actually double every one of those frames, and so it that's how you get that really like staticky vibrating slow motion because it's going picture picture, picture picture, picture 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 so it's, it's kind of repeating it's actually repeating what the next frame is so it, it basically makes it look like you're going back and forth however if you frame in a higher frame rate and then try to slow it down what happens when you take a video shot at say 60 frames per second and you put it into a timeline that is 24 frames per second it takes out those extra 36 frames in each second and it stores it off to the side. So when you go to slow it down, it can pick what the next frame was from each one of those and put it back in so it looks much, much smoother. You're not jumping from one to the other. You're not vibrating. It's literally putting that nice, smooth motion in there. Does that make sense? So what you have to be doing before you even start filming is you have to say, how slow do I want this to be? Now, if you're out filming and you see a dog running and you just go on that dog running you're not really going to be able to smoothly slow that footage back down unless you filmed it at a higher frame rate so just keep that in mind when you film be thinking about how slow do i want to get this to be and then you have to do the math so if you're filming at 60 frames per second you know you can slow it down if you put it in a 30 frame per second timeline you can slow it down by half if you put it in a 24 frames per second timeline you can slow it down to 40 percent if you if you're doing a 24 frames per second timeline let's say you're going back to the dogs running and you want to get that nice smooth super slow motion of the dog grabbing the ball you're going to have to film at like 120 or 240 frames per second and then slow that back down so you have to have it in mind before you film now some people are tempted to go and just film everything at 120 or 240 frames per second just in case they have to slow anything down and if you're gonna be filming like a sporting event that's not a bad idea just remember the higher the frame rate the more data you're having to save so the more space you're gonna have to have on your device all right, let's go ahead and jump in LumaFusion and we're gonna really quick go over how to slow it down, what it's gonna look like and everything like that. Okay, so I have two clips here that I filmed 
just a few minutes ago. And actually, I'm going to throw a third clip in. We're going to do this same clip that we... that we just colored in our last video. If you didn't see that, I'll go ahead and pop the card up for that so you can go take a look at that video to learn about color grading in LumaFusion 3.0. Color wise like the other. It doesn't have to be a great color. I did this one because this is shot at, if we hit our info, not that one. This one was shot at 24 frames per second. So I want you to see what I'm talking about. So if I take this and we play it through, all right, pretty normal looking. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slow this down to one half. And you'll see, by the way, if you come out, as soon as you slow it down, it doubles the length of that. Also keep in mind, if you're slowing down a video that has audio, it's going to slow down the audio too. So just be careful with that. All right, so we got that slowed down. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like now. You see how it's very jumpy here because it's just repeating those frames over and over as opposed to adding in fresh frames. So I went and I filmed these two which is just the leaves blowing and a van going by at 60 frames per second. So let's, not that one. Let's go ahead and do the same. Now you see it puts our line here that we can bring this all the way down to 40% and still get a nice smooth look. But let's go to one half like we did with the other one just for comparison. And it doesn't look as smooth because it was a very shaky. So let's go ahead before we do that. And let's stabilize this a little bit. Now that we have this great feature in LumaFusion. Now you see how the leaves moving is a lot smoother. And then we're going to come here to, oh, I didn't give it enough room for this video. We're actually going to cut this one here because I don't want there to be the movement. And then we're going to slow this down to one half as well. Now you see how the van moving across is so much smoother than it is right here with just me moving my head. That's because I counted the frames. I did the math and I knew I could go down as low as 40% as long as I filmed at 60 frames per second. And yeah, I mean, I just, I did the math. So it just takes a couple of seconds. Once you do it enough, you kind of get used to it and you can kind of do it in your head quickly. Just know that the minimum amount you want to film at for slow motion is 60 frames per second. If I were to put this in a 30 frame per second timeline, it would be just as smooth. But if I were to put this in, actually if I put it in a 30 frame per second timeline, that 24 would be kind of jittery no matter what because you're tr you have to add the extra frames. But uh, the 60 frame would be just as smooth, just as clean. And... I wouldn't be able to go to 40, where with this I can go to 40. Let's check it look and see what 40 would look like with that van, actually. So let's go ahead and bring this down to what LumaFusion says is the ideal speed to have it at.
You see how that just goes through so smooth. You still have the motion blur and everything. But if I were to bring this down any lower, now you're back to that jittery motion as it goes through because it doesn't know what to do. It just has to put extra frames in there. That's pretty much all I have, guys. Slow-mo is really simple. I'm going to do something on uh, speed ramping, but honestly, speed ramping in LumaFusion isn't that great. It's it's all about doing math, and I've got to figure out what the exact... I, I do it now just instinctively, but I want to teach you guys the actual numbers, so I have to go through and look at what I do, and I'll teach you about speed ramping at a later video. Um, like I said, I just did one on color grading. I've got some great videos out there. Let me know in the comments if there's any other types of things you want to learn how to do, and I'll be glad to teach you. Until the next video, guys, thank you for coming by. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can see when I do new videos. And until the next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, God bless, and keep editing. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye-bye.